Today we're driving a 2021 Honda Civic Type R that has just been lightly modified. We have an intake, an exhaust, and 18 inch wheels and tires. These are Bridgestone Potenza S001s in 245 40 R18. The owner, Ryan, was kind enough to reach out and let us have a go. He's gonna be riding along with us today and give me a little lowdown on the specifics with your mods. Yep, yeah, so uh, currently I have a Takeda cold air intake. Uh, definitely chose the Takeda to give a little bit more dramatic uh, induction noise, uh, nice blow off sound. Um, currently running the LM3 Ankies, uh, more of like a budget wheel, uh, but paired with the tires, it's a pretty good combo. And then currently have an NVIDIA R400 exhaust uh, with front pipe. Uh, currently the stock header is uh, installed. Right. Okay, cool. And you just ordered a bunch of other modifications that you'll put on probably this next week tonight. or two. Yeah, tonight. tonight. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. A fair and, <laughs> and short throw shifter. And then uh, I have like a plug and play tune from AFE Scorcher uh, that I'm just kind of curious about to see if that's any, any substantial uh, increase and if I can help out the community with uh, testing that because there's not much of a review. So we've done a bunch of Civic Type R videos. We won't bore you guys too much with a walk around and some details. Let's just hop in. We'll take this for a drive and see how some of the modifications that Ryan's done to his car have changed the driving experience. Um, I've wanted to drive one of these on 18s for quite a while. And it's kind of cool timing too because the 2023 Civic Type R was just teased today, yesterday, yesterday, and it's it's coming out soon. I'm going to an event here in a couple weeks in Nashville, and we're actually gonna be able to see it in person, and I think there's an embargo that lifts before that, so uh, good timing with this 2021 Civic Type R. Already, I like the way the exhaust sounds at idle in a parking lot. said that one thing people complain about with the exhaust is that it's a little bit droney but like we were talking about earlier everyone kind of has their own tolerance for drone and uh, if you want the best idea of what it sounds like listen to this video with headphones and that'll give you guys a pretty good idea oh I can already hear that intake does make some cool tuner car sounds. I really like the steering on these 18s. It feels a little bit lighter. Still really good steering feel. I feel like the Honda engineers were always kind of making excuses for the 20 inch wheels and but really at the end of the day it was just for the looks. This ride's great on a set of 18 inch wheels. Save a little bit of weight too from the 20s. Did you hold on to your stock 20s? Yep. Yeah just in case. Of course. <laughs> a little bit of resale value in there too probably. So we've got rev match enabled which is kind of my preferred way of driving a Type R. You can do a little bit of heel towing on your own to kind of give it a little bit more encouragement and get those revs up a little bit higher, but for just daily driving, that's a nice way to set up your shifting. Ah, uh, I miss these cars so much. are just perfect. Steering feel, shifter's fantastic. subtle and 
you heard a little bit of that in stock form, but the intake just kind of that makes it all better. It yeah, it opens it up a little bit. I drove a big turbo Fiesta ST a few weeks ago, and it was just bucket loads making like squirrel noises under the hood and just all these crazy <laughs> sounds and it definitely enhanced the experience like that's part of the fun if you're going to get a turbocharged front wheel drive hot hatch yep turbo noises is what it's all about <laughs> yeah just like that exhaust sounds pretty good on the highway yeah yeah this is fine 3100 rpm cruising 80 miles per hour not too bad Let's see, let's play with some drive modes. Plus R mode, stiffen up the suspension a little bit. The ride is definitely a little bit softer on the 18s. It takes the edge off. And you can feel just a tad bit of more sidewall rollover. But for Michigan, that makes all the sense in the world to get a smaller wheel tire setup. Our roads are just too rough, too potholed, too treacherous, and risky for a set of 20 inch wheels on. Or were they like 30 section 30 tires? Ratio, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. I know when Car and Driver had their long term Civic Type R, they hit a pothole on the highway just randomly under an overpass or something, didn't see it, and they were stranded for like a whole day trying to get a replacement tire. There's no spare. I know you can retrofit a spare in these cars, but having that extra sidewall is definitely just good insurance. You've got 12,000 miles on this. What other cars have you owned before this? So previously, uh, 2014 Nissan 370Z, uh, 2014 Scion FRS, and then a 2013 Subaru BRZ uh, that had an ABO Stage 2 turbo kit on it. Okay, cool. I actually have never driven a turbo BRZ. I drove a supercharged BRZ. Okay. And I didn't really think it was that much more fun to drive than the standard BRZ, but it, that's a car that definitely needed more power when it first came out. Most definitely. Yeah. I'm curious to see how you'll like this with a tune. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit more, like, happy at the limit on these 18s. Yep. Carvana trade-in is this week, I right? Think, I think it was like 44. Jeez. Just for giggles, I usually check. Yeah, no, it's fun. Let's see what kind of offers you get. Yeah, with the exhaust also, I'm not hearing as much fake piped-in engine sound with this too. It kind of overrides that a little bit, which I like. good job with the mods so far. The exhaust isn't as droney or boomy as I thought it would be. It's actually pretty palatable and you can just, you can hear it. It's almost pretty tame. It's tame, yeah. You know, it's just a tuner car four-cylinder sound. Yep. And, you know, it's better maybe than like the vacuum cleaner noise that this makes on a regular basis. <laughs> So how have you liked this as a daily, as a fun car compared to everything else you've owned? So this definitely takes the cake um, over the three other previous vehicles. Um, just the practicality of it, having a wife and a child, uh, the four doors, it's awesome. Um, 
really no gripes or complaints. You know, it's just a fantastic platform. It's fun to kind of tinker with, mod, everything's pretty straightforward. So if, the, if you're a do-it-yourself type of guy, um, you can definitely do uh, pretty much everything in, in your driveway, in your garage. Pretty easy car to work on. Yep. That's good. Yep. Yeah, there's a ton of aftermarket support for these. That's great. And are parts reasonably like priced, affordable-ish? If you have patience, you can uh, sit on it and just wait for deals. Like the reason why I bought the intercooler, um, that little plug-and-play tune, and then uh, the short throw shifter is uh, 4th of July sale. So. Okay, yeah, cool, nice. Let's go under the bridge. We gotta get it under bridge audio. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would miss rear-wheel drive with a car like this. <laughs> yeah, truthfully, with the handling dynamics, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing much with like a front-wheel drive platform. Uh, the 370Z was fun and dandy, but uh, just something about this actual type R. I think it's because all your inputs are just so great in this car. Like The steering feel is almost perfect. One of the best shifters on the market. Um, you don't have to be driving this car flat out to have fun in it like you do in some other options. It's just a fun car to drive around and when you want to get into it on an entrance ramp or go on a back road or you know take a little blast here and there. It's super satisfying. The only kind of unfortunate thing about the Civic Type R is that it's never really held up super well to track duty. You have to do a bunch of cooling modifications, intercoolers, hood vents, oil cooler, all this stuff. Um, but most people don't track their Civic Type Rs. So that's one, one thing I'm trying to do is gear it uh, and get it ready for the track days because Waterford Race Hill is like three miles away from my home. So oh cool, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah I try to have some weekend events. Yeah, I mean, it can probably handle a good, like, 10-minute, 15-minute session at Waterford. Waterford isn't a super heat-soaking track, cause, just because there's a lot of corners. But out at Gingerman, I don't know how many laps this would last right. with uh, with brakes and uh, uh, just engine cooling. The Veloster N and the Elantra N are slightly better. But again, it's really hard to make a turbocharged front-wheel drive hatchback perform on track without extensive modifications, just straight from the factory. There's just too much heat in the turbo system. And, and uh, But you can do, you can make it happen. I've got a buddy who does a time, he has a time attack build and a Civic Type R and he's super competitive and really fast. And he's got all the cooling stuff figured out. So at least at this point, you can go online, read through forms, figure out what you need to get to make it, you know, do the thing. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. So really fun car on track though. I mean. It, it's the best front-wheel drive chassis I've ever driven. Just amazing. Most definitely. Yeah. No. And even if the rear end kicks out a little bit, it's still super controllable. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> a nice um, sweet spot for speed and range and RPM. 
And really the only time when an exhaust like this gets annoying is on the highway on a long road trip and it's really isn't that loud at all. Put us in a comfort mode, see how that feels. You track fuel economy in this at all? What, what type of gas mileage are you getting? Uh, probably mid-20s. Okay, that sounds about right, yeah. So, I've driven a few other cars that compete with this now. Of course, this Type R isn't for sale brand new anymore, but you can still go out and get one. How does this compare to the Elantra N, for example? I haven't driven a manual Elantra N, but I drove a DCT Elantra N. And, I mean, the Elantra, of course, wins out in price point. I don't know, the Type R feels more solid, a little bit tighter, a little bit more of a quality-built item compared to the Elantra. There's definitely more performance from this car, but they're pretty darn close. And if you want a brand new car with a warranty and, you know, you don't mind that it's a Hyundai at the end of the day, um, the Elantra is probably the better value, but the Civic Type R, there's a little bit of fizziness here that is just lost in the Elantra The Elantra puts down the performance, it makes great noises, it kind of is the whole package, but this Type R really just kind of satisfies in a way the Elantra N doesn't quite measure up to, and granted you are going to be spending about 10 grand more on a Type R, I would trust Type R values to hold much stronger than the Hyundai uh, in the long term, so if that's a consideration, you only keep the cars for a few years, and, or you want to get your money back out of it, Type R is probably a better buy with that regard. But it's so great to have both of these options in the market right now, and I'm really excited to see what Honda does with a new Civic, because, I don't know, aside from just a couple little gripes, this 10th gen Type R is just about perfect. <laughs> Rev Lovener makes a fun noise in the first gear. <laughs> That's worth the exhaust right there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> off the front diff still puts down a bunch of power get rid of the tire on the car <laughs> yep but you know when you have a taller sidewall you the the tires profile and shape is more rounded and less squared off and I think it the steering is a little bit lighter because of it and I want that's kind of a surprise is usually you don't get as much feel with a taller sidewall but maybe 18 is just kind of the sweet spot for this yep. car no I think I think this is kind of how it should have come from the factory I love how Honda offered this kind of, there was a Civic Type R that they had in Europe only, I can't remember the name of it, but they had a set of 19s, um, a very subtle spoiler, I, what was that called, it was like Sport gray, line. Sportline, yeah, yeah. It, had, it had black seats instead of the red, all the red accents, it was very just subdued and casual, and um, I feel like that, they should have brought that to the US, that would have been cool, just to get the 19s on it too. Price point 34 to 35. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, a few grand less than a normal Type R. Cool. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for bringing this out. It's been a pleasure getting back behind the wheel. One of these, it's a great reminder of just how good these cars are. 
Um, I think you hit the nail on the head. This is just kind of one of the best daily drivers out there for someone in your situation, in my situation, wife, a kid, you know, you need a family car that's also fun and practical and reliable and, you know, you, you kind of can't go wrong with the Type R. It does everything really well. Yes, it's not rear-wheel drive, but honestly, um, if you need a rear-wheel drive fun, just go get a Miata or something. I think this is going to compete with any new hot hatches that come out for a very long time. Um, I hope Honda doesn't get rid of some of the, like, the fizzy flavor that this Type R has with the new 11th gen. That's the only thing I'm worried about with the new car is that it won't quite have the same feel, the same tactility. Like, one of my favorite things about this car is when you rev it out, you can feel, you can feel the RPM through the shifter, through the steering wheel. Like, it just it talks to you. And it's so much fun because of that. And no new cars do that. Like the GT3 does that and a couple other cars. And that's about it. Everything else is just kind of numb and distant and, you know, a foreign object. And this, this Type R really, really does satisfy you as a driver. And that's something that's really hard to convey on camera because it's just kind of one of those like, you know, X factor things. And uh, yeah, that's why this is just still, I've made, I don't know how many videos on Type R's, like 15. Yeah. <laughs> it's still one of my favorite cars to drive. So. Anyway, thanks again. Appreciate you bringing this out. Uh, if you guys have any questions in the comments, feel free to chime in. Maybe we'll get a, another chance to drive this again someday when uh, Ryan puts some, a few more mods on it. But until then, that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. I like this in the red, too. I think if I were to get a Type R, it'd be either red or black. The red at least is cohesive with the interior colors and kind of the trim accents. It's a lot of red, but it works. It kind of accentuates how aggressive and wide this car is. Front end looks super, super aggressive in this color. It really accentuates the, the wider fenders and all the intakes. You can tell the refresh 2020 plus Civic Type R's with uh, this kind of blocked out area here. This used to be a honeycomb grill and then this painted front grill strike. Slightly different front grill too. For a little bit better cooling. And that's represented again in the back right here too. I think it's interesting how aftermarket exhaust companies have kept with the triple exhaust setup. <laughs> it's still kind of neat. So is this, this is a cat back, not a turbo back? Uh, front pipe back. Front pipe back, okay. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's like four and a half inch tips. Yeah, big old tips. A little bit of uh, blue action there too. Actually, could you hop in and give it a little rev? Sweet. Perfect. Yeah, super low, deep tone. And you combine that with like the, you know, little whistles from the intake. Sounds yeah, good. That's the one thing I did not want that raspy, high end, like Honda Notorious. Yeah, because some of the exhausts are really raspy yeah. on these Type R's. Like they just, they kind of just sound like crap. Cool.